Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, working on the free tee again. Uh, so in the last video you saw we messed with uh, changing the sweep of the frame here, uh, which gave us uh, some additional travel uh, in the frame where the uh, rear axle sits. So now that that's done, uh, we had to throw some wishbones on in the rear uh, just to get it so that the, uh, the rear wasn't um, twisting on us when we set the weight down on it. So what I'm going to work on uh, in today's video is uh, cutting this, these wishbones and getting them to come to the outside of the frame so we can mount them to the outside of the frame here which will clear all of our framework, we'll get the rear locked in place, we'll get our pinion angle set uh, where we need it to be by modifying all of that and we will have the rear end pretty much bolted in uh, and ready to go. So I'm going to start on getting these marked and cut and we'll go from there. Alright, so got the uh, first little bit of this project started, so you saw I um, cut, I basically took a little pie cut out of the uh, radius rod or the wishbone in the rear, and I uh, re-radius that, changed the angle of it so that it just goes to the outside of the frame rail. Uh, then what I did was I picked uh, similar holes, or actually the same holes on either side of the frame that were at a good spot where I'd like to connect those uh, wishbones and by picking a pre-existing hole in the frame it makes it really easy for me to get everything set up so that the wishbones are the same length and uh, everything's kind of symmetrical. So what I wanted to do is I didn't want to just weld so I'm using those uh, the ball and socket set up like I did on the front where I scavenged the parts from uh, Model A um, steering arms and uh, the links from tie rods and or, or drag links and uh, I'm doing the same in the rear, but I didn't want to just weld the ball section right to the frame. Uh, I think it's a little thin. It's like eighth inch or just under. I forget what the, uh, the thickness on the, this frame rail is, but it's like eighth inch or thinner on this frame. And I don't feel comfortable just dropping the ball in and uh, welding it to the frame. It may be okay, but uh, because it is you know, kind of locating the rear, um, I, I want to go uh, a little further with it. So what I did is I got a quarter inch plate um, that I cut out, sanded the corners and everything, uh, drilled a uh, like a little over a half inch hole here, and I sanded the um, the shaft of, of this, the, the ball on this, and I tapped that in there, made it a nice tight fit, got it sitting pretty pretty good here, and now what I can do is weld it from the back side and I can weld it from the front side around the perimeter here and then I'm going to drill, I'm going to open up the hole in the frame uh, so that you can fit the ball through 
put that through there, weld this plate to the back side of the frame inside the channel uh, of the frame, and then we can also weld from the front side. I can weld again to this shaft here around the hole uh, and to the actual uh, outer part of the frame. So that should really, by welding around this perimeter in the frame, it's going to spread the load, and also we'll be welding in a bunch of other places. I think it should be pretty good. So I'm going to get the, uh, this ball welded on for the first one here. Uh, then we can get it in the frame, get it tacked to the frame, and uh, I'm going to finish weld all this stuff when the frame's blown apart and the body's off, uh, so it's a little easier for me to finish weld everything. But I'm going to get this in, get a couple real good tacks on this thing so that we'll hold it enough to roll it around, and we can jump over to the other side and uh, finish up the other one. So uh, I'll get this all set up and get it welded. Okay, so now we're on to the second side here. This is a little easier to show you guys uh, what's kind of going on here. I figured this was a good angle before I kept working. So I put my pie cut right here. I moved it, uh, or actually rather I cut it, just in front of where the piece is welded. So uh, we have a tubular section, and then the actual bracket that mounts to the, uh, to the rear here, and I cut it just in front of the factory weld. It makes it a little easier to weld and modify. So I put the pie cut there. It's a full length wishbone, so it goes all the way to three quarters of the way to the front of the vehicle because uh, this was off of a later car. And what we need to do is pull this out. So, because I already have the pie cut in it, I can basically bend this down, try not to crush my hand, and we can start pulling it out like this. And that will get us up and away. So, now you can see. Uh, I'll get a shot. My pie cut is closed up here, so the way I cut it, as we bring it together, it closes up the pie cut, and I've already beveled the edges so that we, when we weld, we have good penetration, and we can blend the weld out as if it never happened. Um, so now that i got this kind of full length, what I need to do is go to this hole that we've already done on the other side, same hole, cut this down. So what I like to do is cut it even with the hole uh, that we're using. And then what we're going to do is, as we put that link in, we're going to actually shorten it back. But I can hold the link right up to the wishbone, and I can actually make a really nice mark that's exactly where I need it to be so that I'm not uh, fishing around or having to shim it or whatever. So I'm going to cut this level with the hole that we, we want to mount the socket on, um, and then we'll trim it back as we get a little further. But this is kind of gives you an idea of, of how simple the process is. You're just putting a little pie cut pulling it out till it gets outside the frame rail, cutting it off level, putting the link in, and you know, making everything fit, welding it up, boom, done. Well, not, not that easy, but close to it. So, all right, let me get back to it.
Alright, so, got the rear wishbones all done. Uh, that was a pretty big job and made me wish that I had a lift set up. Uh, laying underneath of the car, welding um, the plates in, and just basically all of the welding, a lot of the fabricating and fitting was done kind of laying on the ground, just a dirty, not fun job, but it's, it's just what you have to do. Uh, something I really like to do when I'm building stuff like this is I like to tack everything together uh, when it's all bolted on the car, clamp down exactly how it's going to mount when it's done. I don't like to guess and do it on the bench because a lot of times things will move with the heat and you go to fit it after you're done welding it and it doesn't fit at all and then you're kind of hacking stuff or enlarging holes uh, and pieces to make it you know, fit uh, because of the movement when you weld. So, got everything together. We jumped up and down with the, um, with the suspension all together now before the pinion was kind of twisting as we were putting weight on, on the car. Now I can jump up and down on the back. With the extra leaves that we added, uh, the car is sitting pretty much just right, but it's really, really stiff in the back of this car because there's nothing to it. So I think we need to maybe take a leaf or two out and maybe replace it with a little, a little spacer block and we can kind of tune how it's going to ride. Uh, because this thing is so light and it came, the suspension is Model A, which is a substantially heavier vehicle, uh, we're going to have to kind of tune the ride height and also the ride quality by doing that. We have more than the main leaf in there, but uh, I think we have like four leaves or so in there, uh, maybe five, and maybe by taking one out or so, it'll maybe ride a little better. Uh, but we'll, we'll play with that as we start adding weight. Uh, overall, the car is a lot closer now. Everything is together as far as rolling and steering goes, and we're basically just going to continue with doing a little bit of sheet metal work, doing a little bit of bracing in the cowls and things like that. I'm going to finish the other header uh, that we did in, in a previous video, and then the engine's ready to go off to the engine builder, get that done, um, and then we can just start kicking butt on the, on the frame and finish welding, get everything together, and get it ready to do some body work. Yes, we are going to paint the car. It's going to be black. Uh, we're going to hopefully make it look like an old lacquer paint job so it'll still retain the old um, feel to the car, which should be pretty cool. So that's all I got for this one. I appreciate you guys watching. As always, uh, Tuesdays we do videos on the 3T, which I'm really working pretty hard on right now. Fridays we do videos that could be the Sweetheart Roadster, Tools That Don't Suck, and Swap Meets, whatever we got going on, and some other projects we got in the shop. So thanks, guys. I appreciate you watching. Catch you later.